Hello and welcome to Stampscapes Live on Friday night here. Friday, I don't know, afternoon for me, Pacific Standard Time, but nighttime for others. Maybe the morning for Australia. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back to, I don't know, some really basic techniques right here. Um, just stamping something out and coloring it in. Now we can say that that can be said for just about every technique, but this is really where we're kind of oh, compartmentalizing the different areas within a scene, okay? Uh, this one is done on glossy cardstock, but the use with the use of colored pencils, I need something with um, a little bit more tooth to it, so we'll go with a matte cardstock here. And I'm going to use the Lakeside Cove, but the only thing that makes the Lakeside Cove um, something water-based, water-side-based, are the reflections. Okay, so here's another example right here that I'm showing the class. Okay, so if we remove those reflections there, not physically removing them from an, an, an impression, but just not stamping them out, and then stamping some sedge filler in this space right here. It just becomes, I don't know, some trees and some rocks next to a meadow or I don't know, maybe it's a, yeah, a drought situation and grass has grown into that space. Whatever it is, it's just not water, okay? So I thought I would try the colored pencils to create this um, floral type of carpeting across this meadow, uh, something that I've been experimenting with a little bit with the um, alcohol inks and other types of um, media. So let's try it with colored pencils. I, I think, I don't know, it could be even be easier. I'm not sure. So, hello, Annie. Hello, Linda. So real kind of, I don't know, back to basics here, you know, and uh, I don't know, I, I, I should really do more of these types of things where it's just like really minimal applications. I don't know, I can't seem to do that though sometimes. It's a minimal application, but we'll throw on some um, white pigment ink and some paint pens over the top of it. But still, you know, really um, some basic types of um, approaches to coloring, okay? Compartmentalizing, like I said. Um, the retreat that I'm going to be teaching at is called Copictopia. And I'm pretty sure, you know, most, you know, a lot of types of colorings with Copic markers are where you're rendering kind of um, specific spaces um, within a form, you know, um, uh, defined by outlines, you know, within the design. Where, you know what I mean, with stampscapes, you know, we're, you know, you need, or just scenic stamping in general. A lot of times, we're just not kind of staying confined within um, given spaces when we're doing coloring. You know, we're adding colors all over, mixing, overlapping, everything like that. So, I, you know, um, I thought I would just come up with some different scenes here. Uh, slightly different than what I usually do um, with all of my blending of imagery, blending of colors, blending of media, multimedia, etc. This one will be a little bit more straightforward, but hopefully um, you know, not lacking any kind of richness, of course. We don't want that. All right, so I didn't um, ink up my reflections, and then we'll fill in that space with some additional grass textures, and we'll hit the foreground um, imagery down here uh, to create that depth within the form. Okay, so this is um, matte cardstock, okay, so a much lighter impression. I, I, I don't know. I Here, I need to hit this more. Okay, so this is matte cardstock. I'm not even sure this is coated. I need to re-ink then. That's one thing that uh, I usually don't do too much on other types of media because it's so, you know, coated and the um, media stays very surface oriented. So, um, and maybe that's why, you know, I was wondering, I, I, I see these people kind of re-inking their things every time they're using it a lot of times. And it's like, man, that is a ton of things, but I don't think they're used to using like, uh, you know, the more coated cardstock. So let's do this again. All right, so I'm trying to get a little bit of variation with green in here. 
Okay. All right, let's see how we do here. We're talking about a pretty sopping wet um, set. stamp here. Lakeside Cove Large. Okay, all right, much better. Okay, so, okay, I'm not even going to merge this to each side of this from left to right, okay? Because I want to keep this one really minimal, so where they can clearly see, you know, where one image ends and the other one begins. Um, in this beginning class, then I'm going to take them into a lot of different types of overlapping um, in the... Uh, I don't know, whatever it is, two and a half hours. We're going to try to get into some of the um, the printable vinyl, too, that they're going to have that in their um, supplies. Okay, so here comes the foreground. <clears throat> and I'll be teaching them, you know, large stamps. You don't always have to use them in their entirety in scenic stamping. So, we're you know, we're teaching them the whole kind of... Um, maybe the differences between, you know, a lot of the different types of stamping that they've probably been doing uh, up until, you know, the class. All right, foreground. What a difference a inked up Marvy pad does. It might even be like too inked up for um, glossy though. I'd have to be really careful about inking this up and going on glossy um, because I'll have to wait for it, you know, a really long time for it to dry. And if I'm teaching in class, you don't want to start, you know, adding a bunch of different colors on there and it's like everything's smearing, including theirs. So, I don't know, I need to uh, take that into consideration. All right, so. Background, foreground, and sky. Hello, CM Hawkins. Good to see you. <clears throat> All right. Let's go with the Bahama blue. The summer sky on matte paper. I think it's going to be just really too light, unless you want something like really, really subtle, you know, in which case it would be fine. But let's make this one a little bit more visible. With the cloud stamp, I'm going to be spending time, <clears throat> like I do in my first uh, workshops, <clears throat> I teach them to take this. Can you see that cloud? Like that. Okay, there we go. And I wipe off this portion of it right around in here, okay? So here it is um, on a wood block. So I'm wiping off this portion and most of this darker portion right there. And what I do, I'm going to have them do as well with, un, you know, an unmounted, non-indexed foam mount as I'm going to have them put. I'll show you later. I have them put an, uh, an arrow, or I'm going to have them put an arrow on their um, stamp. Actually, we don't even need to. I, I've stamped this one so high, I don't really need to wipe it off, but, um, you know, the perimeter. But I'm going to have them do that arrow right there to um, point in the direction of lighting. So the tops of the clouds are kind of light, and that's the way the direction, you know, is coming from the lighting direction. So if we have a moon or a sun or something like that, they know which direction to aim the uh, arrow at. So if there's a moon up above, clouds are below, you're stamping this way. And then if it was a longer piece of paper or something like that, um, if the clouds are above the moon, they're stamping it this way and side of the moon, you know, like that, okay? So if you have an unmounted little arrow, uh, if you have, you know, especially if you happen to use this cloud, if you use some cloud, you know, often, then you, you'll know about that uh, directional kind of uh, angling of the stamp. Hello, Candy. Okay, so let's fill in this area with some grass textures, okay? 
Ooh, that is really, really juicy. I need to go with a very, very light touch here. I mean, it's not super light or anything like that, but... And I, you know, stamping this out in probably, like, green would be better um, for colored pencils, but um, the thing that I'm teaching at is Copictopia, all right? So, they're, you know, it's mostly going to be focused around Copic markers, all right? So they're not going to have, like, a ton of different dye based things. They're going to have, like, three tones of blue, all right? But, uh, I mean, this is... I'm not going to demonstrate the, uh, the mementos. I'll do that in class, but... This is just to show them some different variations. Okay, so colored pencils here. Just pretty straightforward on this one. Okay, I'm just going to do blues for my sky, greens for my meadow area down here, greens and violets. Okay, we'll try for that um, kind of that bluebell looking um, scenario here. Just, let me see if I can get something going with that with uh, colored pencils. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it should work. In in theory, uh, in theory, just about everything works. Um, and application, it's just kind of a matter of how to get there. Hello, Kathy and Diana. Hope you all had a pleasant week. All right, let me... I'm looking at my... Uh, my... Uh, where are my violet tones in here? I'm looking at my colored pencils. And... Oh, here we go. I was going to say, you know, I haven't used my colored pencils too much, and I don't seem to recall using, like, violets too much. When I was a kid, purple was, you know, by far my favorite color. And I don't seem to recall kind of, you know... Having that notion in mind as an adult stamper, but it seems strange that, uh, you know, a couple of these purple pencils are still, like, you know, one of the shorter ones to use. I don't even remember using, like, colored pencils uh, through the years, you know, with stamping very much. Okay, so I'm just grabbing um, greens, a range of, and this is too many, but... I don't know, I just want to see what I have here. Okay, so we're going to oscillate this a little bit with... Um, I, maybe I should do California poppy. No, let's just... Okay, let's go with the uh, the bluebells here. Um, I was going to say California poppies would be kind of cool in here. Oranges and greens. But I want to, I want to you know, I'm practicing with that um, bluebell type of uh, scenario. So, all right, so greens with grasses and kind of your you know, blue-violet tones for those puppies, okay? So I'm going with something like this. It seems like I'm missing something right in this violet range. Like, there should be, I don't know, like something in between these two, okay? I don't know, we'll just go with... See, if you don't have that, then, I mean, you can go with, like, uh, you know, blues overlapping pinks, right? That's going to form a violet, I think. <laughs> I don't know if it does. I think it does with colored pencils. I don't know. Okay, so here's what I'm getting at right here. Rambling, but... Um, so these two, when it comes to, like, dye-based inks, okay, it, it, they're going to kind of clash. Not not so much the blue, but, you know, like, purple. If you just... If you're overlapping, like, violets over the top of green, you know, which you end up doing with, um, like, dye-based ink applications, it, it might look really muddy in those areas where they do overlap, you know, because you have to have some overlap going on, otherwise it looks like completely non-related um, kind of, oh, I don't know, whatever, areas within a given space that's supposed to be harmonizing with each other, you know, it's flowers within a meadow. Okay, so what you get is um, you have to find some kind of intermediate, you know, tone that can relate to both of them or can be blended in both so when you start talking about your violet tones you know your blues are over here and then you know your reds are over here or something like that you know and that becomes um you know your violet tones like that but if you start kind of moving this way if you move into like a 
you know, a pale orange or something like that, a beige, that can relate to both these and these. So I think, so I see this as like the color that I would lay down first, because it'll be in both um, areas within that given space. Okay, so uh, like something like this, these two colors probably would be fine. Okay. And I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm kind of guessing here, okay? All right, so, man, I haven't worked on just just straight non-coated cardstock in a really long time. I don't think this is clay-coated here. I think it's just really basic um, cardstock here. All right, so, what I notice is more tooth to it than I'm normally using, which, I don't know, should be good for colored pencils. But we'll try to create a range, and I'm going to try to still retain some areas of lightness in here, so um, we'll see how this goes. I mean, with this color right here, it's almost so light, you can really use it under the entire thing. And it's a warm, t I don't know if you can even see that here. Um, it's a little bit of a warm tone, okay? Now I'm going really light, so I'm not going like that dark, I'm going like this with it. So it's like a 5% version, maybe 10%. Hello, Lindy Moo. Good to see you packing up the craft room. <laughs> Uh, stamp this exact scene out uh, before you pack it all up, though. <laughs> do a do a stamp along, a, a live stamp along with me right now. So you got to break out all that. You got to unpack unpack your uh, stampscapes first. All right, so here we go, right there. See, I'm kind of uncertain as far uh, as to um, how much I, of this I should lay down because I'm kind of familiar with, you know, laying down the colored pencils on um, the semi-gloss. That's what I've been using my colored pencils with mostly. And I know about how many layers of these Prisma colors I can lay down on there before it just becomes so built up it's just not no more of the pencil is transferring on there you know that wax but this i can probably get more coverage i'm guessing you know i can get more more of a, a built you know built up layering well we'll we'll see So poll question, do any of you stamp on just plain cardstock? I'm not like a not like even like a coated mat, you know, but just plain cardstock. I I haven't done it too many too much over the years. Okay, so let's start moving into some of these tones here. Uh let's go. I mean I can go with the greens or this one first. I have a feeling that whatever one I do first, though, is probably going to be the most dominant color because I'll just keep laying it on. I don't know. Well, uh, we'll see what I do here. Okay, so let's see. Let's go with the flower, the floral areas right here. How about I'll go here? We'll try to do it like here, you know what I mean? Not just like a bunch, like right in the middle. I think it looks better if it's kind of patchy, okay? But maybe have a, a dominant area right in here, but then, you know, kind of have it a little bit isolated or something like that. I'm missing chrome coat videos. There's 1700 out there, Candy. <laughs> uh, videos in general, I was pretty shocked. I think I got to 1700 videos out there. I would say the first probably 95% of that first 
Oh. I don't, not a thousand, but, uh, I don't know, maybe. Um, our glossy cardstock. Okay, I need to put the brakes on here a little bit. In these kind of these meadowy areas, I'm used to doing this kind of kind of more monochromatic um, type of approach. I tell you what, I won't I won't develop like all of the the violet bluebell areas first. You know, from light, medium, and dark. I'll just go. I'll just kind of bring this up into focus like really sh uh, slowly. So let's go with the lightest version of the greens as well. Okay, and we'll try to keep these areas um, somewhat uh, isolated from each other. But, okay, so this, this is where, this is green. This is a little bit pink right here. I don't know if you can tell that in there. But this kind of, this meadowy, kind of floral, kind of carpeted, you know, grassy area. After I did that first scene, um, I, did, I did a couple of these, uh, or was it last week? And I don't remember. Um, after I saw that first piece that I did with those bluebells, I thought, man, I don't know if I'm going to just do a plain green, you know, meadow again, or just a, a monochromatic one. You know, I would probably vary it with, you know, unless I'm doing a winter scene. But if it's like spring or summer or something like that, I thought it looked... I don't know, I thought it looked more interesting um, with that with that amount of um, kind of color color um, variation within that space. I didn't think I could, I didn't think I could, I don't know I I didn't really consider it before because I didn't think the uh, the areas would harmonize with each other and blend into one another, especially the dye based inks. But the paint pens just seem to take care of like so many things for us, you know, because they're opaque. So if you get an area that look, you know, looks a little bit muddy, you just go over it with a bunch of colored dots, and it covers it up, and it, and it blends it in too. So all right, so see that right there? It's kind of oscillating a little bit. We have this kind of going like this, this. And this back here, this kind of comes in like that, you know, so this kind of creeps in like that a little bit. What do you use your plain cardstock for, Annie? What do you, uh, what media are you doing um, with that? Or is it a bunch of different media? Like, you know, I, mean, I, I, I take it Copic markers, you know, it's mostly, um, it, or is it, is it all, well, people use, um, what is that, what's that paper? Yupo, right? But it seems like I see more um, matte, matte cardstock these days with um, uh, the alcohol markers. So these people going to this, um, going to this retreat next week it's 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 in person and they're also doing it um by the way this is a blue violet right here and i'm getting some of these um darker areas within the meadow area right there um but the instructor for um and coordinator for copictopia um she told me because she's going to help me out with my workshop because I'm teaching remotely. So I need someone, a rover, going and helping people, you know, in person, you know, if they have any questions or whatnot. But um, she's having them, they, they're they going to be bringing 90, it's like 92 or something um, Copic markers to uh, the retreat, you know, to use on different projects, not on one project, but anything where they're using um, Copics so that they have the right color for that specific um, project. But I thought, wow, that is a lot of, uh, that's a lot of different colors. I thought they're, they're really, um, 
taken like a super specific, like almost like a scientific approach to like really specific tones and color temperatures and intensities and everything like that. All right, so there goes your kind of the beginnings of a, so see, everything's kind of starts off light and dull, and then I'm getting it to darker and brighter as I move along here. And I just do it like that because I have a lot more control over it that way, just to build things like really slowly. So everything's kind of coming into focus like just a little bit at a time, okay? Hoarding the chrome coat. <laughs> now, if we're talking about that real, you know, the classic chrome coat, the original formula, not the CTI one, that would be pretty, uh, that's pretty, that's getting pretty rare, I'm sure. And, and only in people's um, private collection. I don't. I think I do, I think I do, I still do have some of that original formula chrome coat. You know, chrome coat went out of business um, several years ago. And um, CTI papers out of Italy um, bought the name and just renamed their um, I've said this before on live stream, so forgive me for repeating, but um, um, just for brand recognition, because Chrome Coat was so big, probably, I guess, in, in the U.S., but probably North America in general, um, they just, they just renamed their bind coat so it's really CTI's bind coat is the new, you know, CTI Chrome Coat. They still have, uh, bind coat still out there and being sold, but, I don't know, just for recognition, um, that uh you know chrome coat name was purchased probably for very cheap you know if they were going out of business but chrome coat was the one you know that was the one uh d grunig uh, always used and um kind of brought into the uh you know forefront of a. Uh, rubber stamping in those late 80s and early 90s and especially when she started getting on uh, like Cara Duvall and all that okay so we're going a little bit brighter here it looks like it, it almost looks like it's lighter but it's really not it's just brighter um, because it's you know the intensity I'm getting a little bit I'm going for something that's very dull like that to something you know a little bit brighter not that bright but This will be my grassy areas, sometimes uh, the brightest areas within given forms are in the shadows because, you know, light tends to wash out um, a lot of the intensity of color. So on gloomy days like we're having out here in California, all the colors outside are nice and bright. Let's see. Okay, so let's go, let's start developing our, our bluebell areas are kind of becoming pretty developed here. Let's go into our darker greens. Working with all these different colors, one of the things I, I need to keep in mind too is framing here. I usually like to kind of frame things off really nicely, so I still need to do that. So maybe I'll do that with color here. I'm usually doing it with, uh, when working with dye-based things, I'll do it with the black. So Lindy, are you, uh, are you moving or something? You gotta pack up the, uh, packing up the craft room. Uh, did I say hello to Jen? I don't remember. Hello, Jen. <laughs> I 
Super smooth cardstock from Pink Frog in the UK. I wonder what brand that is, though. What what uh, um, what cardstock they're using? Uh, Pink Frog. There's no there's no crafting company that makes cardstock out there. Um, it's all from larger mills. Like Chrome Coat was like supplying like the North America basically, okay? And just to put that in perspective, they're they're one of the dominant um glossy cardstock manufacturers mills around, you know, for book covers, posters, etc., you know. <laughs> so when a company like that, you know, goes out of business. It's like, oh my God, you know, there's so many mills that are just disappearing, you know, so they're supplying like a lot of different things. So like crafting companies or something like that, they're, they're packaging up some other brand, you know, so it might be like a Chrome coat or something like that, or, oh, I don't know what some of those other brands are, um, of paper. I don't, I don't know a lot of the brands like the European ones. But CTI Papers is based out of um, um, Italy, so I mean it could be something like a bind to coat. I'm not sure. It could be one of the Ninas. I mean they're good to buy them that way though, because you know you don't have to buy a ream of a. Uh, whatever, 200 something sheets, you know, when crafting companies have them, you know, it's what, packages of like 25, you know, sheets or 10 or something like that. So like Ranger, I'm not sure which one the Ranger was using. So Ranger, I was guessing that it was Chrome Coat and like stamping up 10 sheets or something like that. So when people want to kind of experiment around with that, that's what I always used to recommend, but I, I'm not sure if uh, Ranger is packaging that up anymore. Uh, you know, glossy cardstock. All right, so we're going here. So I'm just building up. So if you just joined in, I'm kind of, I'm kind of create this, me I'm trying to create this meadow here that is carpeted in wildflowers amongst the grass, okay? So I'm working with like these different values of both the violet bluish t you know tones and the greens here and this is like <laughs> like my first foray into you know the the colored pencil kind of matte cardstock world in general here and plus i haven't done this kind of this configuration of flowers so i'm just kind of playing around here but this is this is how I do it though you know I'm just kind of you start light and dull and then you just kind of continually add more and more and develop your um, whatever ends up being your darker areas and your shadows you just kind of keep developing them a little bit more um, at a time so it just comes into focus kind of nice and slowly you know and controlled um, where you have a little bit more of a kind of the gist of kind of the direction of something. You have to look at, you know, and see what, you know, how everything's looking on your card and where it seems to be going. You know, certain areas just start to get a little bit darker and it looks, okay, that looks like it'll be a cool little kind of shaded area. So I just kind of make it darker. And yeah, I'm kind of directing it, but, you know, in, in many ways, um, I don't know, the card starts directing uh, some of it solve too. So here's the green. Here. And then paint pens are going to go over the top of this too. So this is just kind of foundation. Okay, this is getting kind of a little bit darker. And I can go darker, you know, just by using a, a darker, you know, um, pressure on this, but uh, I'm keeping it kind of light still. Um, I'll get to those rocks later too. Okay, you're using, yeah, 
Copics and colored pencils. So that's with your matte cardstock then, right, Annie? You should have been on Carol. <laughs> I thought, you know, I, if, if I, so that Carol Duvall show, if I, if I had done um, the HIA shows and CHA shows, um, that's where they usually got people um, to go on that show because Carol Duvall would be, you know, riding around on, um, she used to ride on one of those little scooter things, you know, those electric scooter types of things at those um, shows. Um, going around, you know, in different booths and checking things out. But if I had done like those shows and if I was demonstrating, maybe, you know, they would have asked me to go on there or something like that. And that's where, that's where they got a, a lot of people to do books too, you know, cause all like a lot of the different publishers for, um, art and crafting books, um, they go around to do that. Um, you know, getting new ideas for books and things like that. So who knows? Maybe there could have been a scenic stamping, like hardbound book. <laughs> I never wanted to do that show though, because it was just, I don't know, it was like super expensive and there were so many rules, you know, uh, with that show. You couldn't go out like X amount of feet with your booth or something like that. And there was drayage, you know, you can't go and just unload your stuff uh, yourself. You had to go to the dock and everything like that. It was kind of complicated. Oh, and then you had to be a part of the association and things like, you know, uh, the association and what, uh, you know, to, to do the show too. So I don't know. It was very pricey, but I did it. I, I demonstrated there with ampersand art though. All right, so we're getting a little bit brighter here. It's kind of starting to starting to kind of um, take shape a little bit. I need to be careful with this pink here. It's very bright, but um, it's also kind of darker, so I don't want to get too dark with it. All right, let's go with some just I don't know. gray tones for my rocks here okay keep those rocks really kind of like uber basic here i'm just hitting the lower side of them where they're um in shadow okay and then we'll just re you know leave the tops of them illuminated like that okay so i don't know it looks like one color can do the trick All right, now let's let's see in here in these um, floral areas. Let's hit a little bit more def definition with some darker tones. So this is a dark blue. Here's the blue violet again. Okay, so let's hit some of these pockets in here. Let's go down to the grass area around the rocks and deepen the shadows around those. Oh, I almost forgot about the sky too. Let's hit that sky with a little bit of a uh, tone. So. We'll largely keep those lighter billows up there, so I'll just hit it with a lighter tone to flesh this, you know, out a little bit more. And I'll fill in some of this space in here. So we'll uh, create our own little vignette <clears throat> like this, I think. And we'll keep this kind of central illumination right in here. So let's darken in this area right here. All right, and a darker blue. All 
How are those pieces coming along, Annie? For the class. All right, so there we go like that. It's looking a little muddy down here, but that's where those pens are gonna come into play anyway. Okay, let's see, I haven't used this one at all. Violet. <clears throat> Does anyone live where um, there's uh, bluebells? I just wanna know if there's like, I, I need to take a look. I, I, I looked at several different um, painting videos, but then I've been looking at um, some photographs of bluebells now too. Um, and I need to get that, I don't know, color kind of combination down a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That's looking a little bit better. But some of the bluebells look really blue and some of them look real violet, you know, uh, from uh, the different, uh, like painting videos and things um, that I've seen. Okay, so this one I see that this one right here is a little bit darker like that. So let's hit that a little bit more. So uh, people in that class that I'm teaching next week are not going to be doing this, okay? They're not going to have like colored pencils at that thing. I just wanted, I want some examples of different media um, because people that um, don't do scenic stamping at all, a lot of times they think that um, scenic stamping is a technique in terms of... Um, what media has to be used in scenes, okay? Um, and I, I'm people ask me that all the time um, if they see something on Chrome Code or glossy cardstock. Um, they say, "Hey, uh, I get comments like, yeah, I, I'd really like to, you know, kind of learn how to, you know, do stampscapes, uh, but I don't know where to get glossy cardstock." Okay. Or uh, does glossy cardstock have to be used with your stamps or something like that? You know, so it gets very media specific. Um, do uh, mementos work with stampscapes, you know, or something like that? You know what I mean? Like, you know, just the different types of inks or something like that. Um, they think it's like, it, it's much more formulaic and I'm kind of beginning to realize why. Um, and that's because a lot of different videos or kind of instructional things are very specific. They're using a specific type of thing with, you know, to create a card or something like, okay, now you're you, you using your uh, marker number or whatever, okay, and you're going to fill this in this way or something like that, you know. And it's not so much, it's not, it's a little bit less general of kind of an approach. Um, so they're kind of assigning that same type of um, um, kind of approach to just stampscapes or scenic stamping in general. All right, so that is that, all right. So a little bit of variation in there, and we have our sky, we have our lighting up there, there. Now let's kind of really kind of bring this into focus now with some paint pens, and we'll go with the acrylic paint pens. I'll go with my three millimeter one, or I should have taken these out earlier and shaken them up, but. Let's go with, let's go with uh, these and then, oh, let's go, 
here, I'm just kind of grabbing everything. Okay, so let's go with this. I, you know, I don't know if I'll be using all of these, but gotta shake them up really good. <laughs> hold, hold on to them tighter. Okay. But Carol Duvall used to. Uh, I don't know if I. I don't know if I had HGTV. I used to watch her whenever I'd be flipping the channels and she was on, though. And I think all of those. I don't know about all of them, but a lot of them are on uh, YouTube now uh, that you can check out, which is cool, you know. Like, I'd check it out, like the D. Grunig one, stuff like that, uh, over the years. Um, okay, all right. I'm trying to decide on which one of these. This one might be a little bit too dark, huh, for that. Let's start with something lighter. I usually work from dark to light when it comes to these pens, but um, I know this is like all colored pencils now. I'm usually going over uh, colored pencils that have been applied over dye based ink. So let's just see how this works. So, okay, so I'm going to keep these colors roughly in areas that aren't too much different than them, just to kind of get that textural, oh, kind of, build up going and I'm sorry you can't see this at all this is like the exact same value as the colored pencils underneath so it's a good start you know because it doesn't it isn't changing it drastically and that's what I like I, I like to apply media where there's not a big drastic change especially when you're changing colors or media completely so it's just I kind of get into it nice and slowly. All right, so that is in these areas that are roughly, like I said, the same value. Now, let's go ahead, let's, let's try this one right here. Like I said, it is a little bit darker, but I'll hit it in the shadow areas a little bit more. And then if it gets too dark, we'll just go over the top of it with um, with some lighter um, textures. The thing that I'll be interested in seeing on this matte cardstock is just how how vibrant can we get? You know, such an absorbent surface um, using this type of media, and how much buildup we can get because. The surface is also absorbing, you know, some of the paint and media, you know, beyond the surface there. So it's just going to look lighter than um, how it looks, uh, you know, with the uh, kind of more surface uh, retention uh, types of uh, papers and, you know, holographics and whatnot, cardstocks. All right, so here comes some pink. So this is going right over the top of some of those darker tones. And I'm kind of moving it towards the top end area of those illuminated violet areas. So when you do this, kind of, you know, think uh, Monet or uh, Impressionism <laughs> as you're doing it. Have, 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 a, have a documentary on Monet playing in the background. Maybe that would uh, kind of inspire. <laughs> oh, here's one right here. I've used this one right here. This one's really bright. That's the plan. Do remodel, sell, and move to Colorado. Wow. It's almost, it's been almost a year now in the parts that I haven't seen in years. <laughs> Colorado. My first trip to uh, Denver, I taught at this store called the Happy Stamper, which is in this Cherry Creek area of, uh, uh, okay, this is really bright here. Cherry Creek area of uh, Denver 
And uh, she was one of the first uh, rubber stamp stores in that general area. And uh, I always like bookstores and things like that. And I don't know, just listening to things like radio stations and stuff like that out there. I really enjoyed um, that Denver trip. I went to this bookstore called The Tattered Cover. Really awesome bookstore. I think it was two stories with a cafe. This is like really early. This is, you know, before Barnes and Noble and Borders and all that type of, you know, stuff. But yeah. And then there was, you know, there was a ton of um, uh, stamp companies and stamp stores out there at, you know, in the heyday. So quite a town. I, I did several teaching trips out there. Okay, so this is kind of the same tone as this one, but this is just a little bit smaller. So if I want to get a little bit more texture in here in a subtle way, maybe it's almost too subtle, I can barely see it here. Let's just switch up to uh, some of the grass, uh, greens here. All right, dark green, light green. Where in Colorado, uh, Lindy? Are we talking like uh, the main areas, you know, not like Durango or something like that? Or where is it? Um, what's on the western edge of uh, Colorado? What's that city out there? Uh, yeah, I can't remember that. Grand, Grand, Grand Junction? Grand Junction. There used to be um, two or three stores in Grand Junction at any given time over the years. Stamps, you know, stamp stores. I don't, I don't think anything in like Southern, uh, way Southern uh, Colorado, you know, like Durango or something like that, or Pagosa Springs, too small, you know. Maybe, maybe scrapbook stores, you know, years later, but not stamp stores. But a lot of stores out there in uh, Fort Collins and down to Colorado Springs. All right, let's go with the, some of the darker greens in these darker green areas. Way too dark, but that'll just be my foundation for this one that's gonna overlap it. Okay. I foresee, I predict a lot of white pigment ink in this uh, scene here. <laughs> I should use the prairie dog, which I hardly ever use. But that prairie dog would be good in this like floral meadow like this. In the early days of the internet, um, just kind of doing a, a search for stampscapes, just the word. I was probably searching on like web crawler from AOL or something like that. Um, someone had uh, bookmarked or something like that. Um, the Prairie Dog, Stampscapes Prairie Dog um, stamp. And it was by some Prairie Dog lovers, you know, I don't know, form or something like that. But their description of it was, um, you know, like it's something like most of the um, prairie dogs they've seen out there, I don't know, whatever they didn't like, but this one they liked because it wasn't so cartoony. <laughs> you know, the prairie dog ones, you know, they were, they were like cartoon, you know, uh, characters or something like that, um, that they were, uh, that they were finding out there in terms of, uh, I don't know, stamps or just artwork or something like that. This is like in the 90s. All right, so here comes white. This, for me, white, when I start adding it into like this type of setting right here, it's the thing that um, this last week when I was doing these carpeted, you know, floral carpeted areas, um, white was the thing that really kind of really brought things together because it kind of defines 
the edge, I guess, of the floral cluster against the grass, okay? Otherwise, it kind of gets all kind of muddled a little bit, you know? But this kind of, it defines the, um, it, it separates, I guess. It separates in terms of um, colors, but it still unifies in terms of a texture because, you know, the, the grassy area is still made, you know, with the, you know, in this case, like a little dot. Okay, so texturally it's, it unifies, but again, from, I guess it's value, lightness, um, it separates it in terms of value, the two areas, or whatever, entities, grass and, you know, flower. Okay, now this one, this is like, the white is really disappearing in this one. This tends to, white, these paint pens tend to um, dry a lot darker than, than what they look like when they've been freshly applied. So on this matte paper, it's like really soaking in, you know, so my kind of tighter definition right in there kind of really disappears. But one of the things you can do is when it disappears, you just build it up more. So it's like you're building up layer upon layer and it's getting more opaque with whatever color you're doing that with. I guess um, if you wanted a certain color to stand out a little bit more, and if it just wasn't showing up over the top of say green, you can put these layers down of like white like that. And then if you wanted to, you can come back in with a pink or something like that over the top of the white where it'd be more of a pure pink, I'm guessing because of the buildup like that. One more set, okay, cool, Annie. Annie's taking, I don't know. I don't know if I mentioned, Annie's taking a private class, so we're doing like specifics <laughs> in, uh, we're gonna refine, refine those techniques. Annie, when you've, you haven't been in here in the past and a couple times, but, um, right after um, you told me about um, your 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 card sales with the mirror cards, the reflection cards, uh, but I liked your quote about um, Annie was telling me that. Uh, well, I don't know if she can tell you here, but um, um, and I think we've talked about it in another live stream. But uh, I liked uh, how Annie made reflection cards, right? and people bought like multiples of them because they wanted to see what they did. <laughs> so it's, you know, just a, it's a card, you know, it's not like it's, you know, there's pulleys or anything like that or lights that come up, but there's that movement that when you're opening up a, a reflection card, you know, of what happens in that. Um, you know, it looks like, you know, there's something that's happening with, you know, within those reflection cards like that, so really three-dimensional and almost pop-up looking, you know, cards. I'm showing that here in case people don't know, someone doesn't know what I'm talking about. But if you sell cards, take it from Annie. Uh, make a lot of those types. <laughs> and people will maybe buy multiples of them. Now, if you don't mind me sharing that, uh, Annie, I love that, uh, I loved uh, that, hearing that. So that's what we're, all, what we're all trying to do, right? You know, I mean, you give something, you know, give a card to someone or sell it, you know, we, you know, hopefully, you know, it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's it, exciting. Um, there's that handmade element to it, of course, but uh, also, you know, we want to make we want to make things that just aren't readily available, um, you know, and can be unique to I don't know whatever whatever you're doing. Okay, so here's my 0.7 millimeter, very small here. I'm wondering if I should put something in here. I should put like a deer or something like that. Okay. Let's see. Hello, Bonnie. <laughs> I started this one a little bit earlier. We're gonna eat dinner here a little bit earlier tonight because my son has to, he didn't go to the gym to work out, to do his uh, parkour workout. 
um, because he's got to take the SAT tomorrow. How fun is that? <laughs> I don't know how long. It's been like 40 years since I took the SAT, but I still remember it. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. These days, you don't even need, um, like, colleges. You know, the SAT. Um, you can submit your scores or not. It's like a, such a bizarre notion to me. Okay, I'm kind of hitting my shadows a little bit more, you know. Kind of going back and forth a little bit with the toning. So things got a little bit lighter. Then you can hit it more with, you know, now I can see where um, the edges are, like with the little white marks like that. Then over the top of those illuminated areas, you can hit it with a little bit more shadow like that, you know, just to define things a little bit more. Uh, within the space so not you know n everything doesn't have to be like high contrast you know there's certain types of um atmospheric things you can do where it's all kind of misty or something like that and that's fun but just from a a richness perspective okay like i said there could be a real just cloudy area down there and that's really richness you know it's rich in but it's a subtle richness okay but um, just as far as like potential goes, the more contrast you have uh, in terms of your textures, temperature, value, etc., you know, if you put it in there, um, then it could potentially just be more varied, like, you know, like stop signs are. <laughs> stop signs and um, construction signs, you know, there's the most amount of contrast, you know, to get people's attention. That's why they're, you know, it's red against white. It's red has like the shortest wavelength or something like that. And, you know, white is the, you know, the most contrast you can get against that. So that's why they do that. Or yellow and black uh, for construction signs. Okay, so I think that's as far as I'll go there. My white texturing in there isn't too visible, so let me try to hit a little bit more. And I'll hit it with three millimeter. There's so much media on here. I'm wondering if I can even hit it, you know, with like a like a deer in here with the uh, with stays on if it'll stamp over all this. guess it would okay getting there Linda huh it was all kind of muddled in there but the extra little contrast I think is kind of bringing it out a little bit it, it, or whatever improving it oh man. okay I'm not going to take the time to go find it unless it's around here I don't I haven't used it for a while but some extra little kind of um, textures in here would be really good. Um, I have this stamp called, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Um, I should know the names of everything. I did, but I forgot. <laughs> but it's this craggy little branch that you can kind of intersperse within this area right here that will kind of vary that, you know, going back to textures, what I was talking about. Uh, let me see if I have here. Oh, uh, here we go. This one right here. I can use the smaller one, but I also, here, I just found this one too. I think that'd be kind of cool in here. Okay, so let me see if I can get this. And this will be good because I'm going to see if this stays on. We'll stamp over these things in here. And if it doesn't, no big deal, but I don't want to stamp this in here with stays on. It's like, pick it up and it's like a, like a ghost, you know, horse where it's like, you know, only, I don't know, a certain low percentage of that black ink transferred over in there. So let's test this out. Okay. There we 
right? So I'm just, I'm going to be masking off about halfway up so we just get some of this kind of little craggy little bush kind of sticking out of the surface like that. Okay, that works. I, I doubt if you can see that, though. On the, uh, a little bit. You can see it right there, here, here, okay? Okay, so that stays on, sticks on there just fine. All right, so do I do this first? Yeah, let's do this first. The Stazon might stamp out a lot darker than the dye-based ink, which absorbed into the surface of the paper, though. So, I, I don't know, I guess that's no big deal, but... Okay, I'm kind of masking off a little bit because I want this horse to look like it's kind of standing in the grass. I'm kind of masking off part of its, uh, just the base of its legs. I don't, I don't want it, like, waist-deep and, you know four feet of uh, grass or something like that, but just, you know, kind of masking off just the lower, real low portions of it like that, okay? Like, like so. It loves eating the uh, flowers, apparently. <laughs> I'll give a little bit of color here just to model it a little bit more. Okay, I was wondering if that stays on would stamp darker. I'm going to try something here. It looks about, it looks roughly the same value as these trees, but these trees looked a little bit darker when I first stamped them out. I'm going to see if I can layer, put another layer of these trees in the foreground just to create a little bit more depth because the stays on is going to stay on the surface a lot more because it dries like instantly. So let's just see if this works or not. So I'll do it a little bit offset from the rest of the uh, trees and I'll just go with a low top portion right here. So they'll represent trees that are a little bit closer to us if they are um, darker in value. I think a little bit, not too much, but like I said, I don't know if that's going to dry lighter, you know, as that sets up, but we'll know in like a few seconds because it should dry up really fast. Bean stays on. Look at that stays on um, right there. It lifted off a lot of my little dots right where it stamped over them, you know. It just grabbed it, you know, because it probably dried while I was making the impression on contact, and it just lifted those dots right off the page. All right, so let's bring in uh, what is often my savior in a uh, scene, my scenic savior, which is the white pigment ink here, okay? So this, to me, is looking, it's just, it's just too monotonous which happens with my pieces a lot, but it's just a foundation. I'm not kind of correcting something. This is just like a foundation for something to come over the top of it. So um, this is going to give me my variation within this space and making some areas duller and more muted in this area should potentially, in theory, <laughs> make the areas that I don't cover look brighter just because of the contrast, so I'm not actually making something brighter, but I'm just making something next to it duller, you know, within this field here. So let's see what it looks like here. I might be doing some masking out just so I'm not applying, you know, because there's these different little ridges in here. So as I do this like this, I'll just kind of mask them off and have that little haze um, behind those like that, okay? So torn paper towel, so I don't do it with like a you know, real, like a real straight edge like this in this uh, type of surface right here. So nice and varied. Let's see. Bonnie's landline and internet is out. Uh-oh. Do you have unlimited data, Bonnie? <laughs> well, glad to have you on. 
Thanks very much for uh, the sacrifice there. We were talking about data and stamping. I was thinking about AOL and uh, back in the day about uh, the stamping group on there and how everyone's, uh, you know, had overage, you know, because we were always like in the, I think it was rubber stamp arts or art. I, I forget what the name of the, the chat group was, you know, those scrolling things like we have here going on. Um, but on AOL, um, you know, you had a, like a certain amount of time I was wondering if a couple of those members were spending like a thousand dollars a month or something like that on their uh, AOL bill. All right, so oh my white pigment ink I think is quite no okay here we go. I was gonna say it I think it is quite dry and it is a little bit but let's keep let's go in here. Put some around the horse. I won't, I'll try not to get too crazy with it. Well, I don't know. We'll see how it's going. So it's just like a, almost like a powdery application of this. It's a wet medium, but we're just applying like a really thin layer of it. So I went from here, over here, and over here. So I'm doing that same kind of zigzag pattern. That's kind of going on in here. Do you see it? That zigzaggy type of thing with, uh, you know, that oscillation of, you know, green and violet. Oh, the foothills. That sounds great, Vin vintage scrap girl. I, you ever drive on the, uh, I don't know, drive, you ever, were you ever driving from, uh, I don't know, your area to LA over that grapevine area in the spring? I was shocked at the number of, uh, flowers on that. I started doing a lot of that driving this. There's this one area, if people are living in Los Angeles and they're driving to, I'm, t I'm telling other people here. If, if they're driving to like the Bay Area or Sacramento, Bakersfield, that type of area, um, they drive over this area on the five called the, it's known as the grapevine. But during the spring, God, I, I never even heard of all those wildflowers up there. Just poppies and lupin and uh, just painted hills. It was so dramatic. I was shocked the first time I saw that. All right, so kind of getting, uh, this is going really slow here with the, uh, okay, I think my pad is really, okay, here we go. I'm getting a little bit more sopping wet here. I'm, I'm doing this like I do it on um, the coated cardstocks, the semi-gloss and whatever. This is going slower, I can tell. And it just, I think it's just due to that absorption in there or something. Now, if this is a brand new pad, I wouldn't do it this fast, but I can really kind of put a big glob in there and it just, it doesn't seem to influence it quite as much. But do you see this area where it's starting to glow in here a little bit more with this white pigment ink? Uh, that's what I'm going for. I guess it's good that it's kind of happening a little bit slower. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much slower, but that, I don't know, that's what it seems like to me. Okay, so we have that through the meadow right here, that little bit of change of texture. Um, I might add some more of a uh, colored pencil in there. Some of it's a little bit too yellowy. But, okay, so right up in here, um, through the clouds, 
and the most distant trees there. Let's take a look and see what that looks like in there. See, it pushes those trees back a little bit, right? In terms of distance. And it illuminates them and softens them too. So you kind of do a lot of different things all at the same time here. Putting this up into those uh, clouds, it makes them look softer and more billowy. And if I concentrate that in here, in the illuminated area, then the darker areas just seem a little bit darker. Not too much darker, because there's not very much contrast anyway, but... So, we'll kind of illuminate those trees here. The matte paper, I don't know, I like, I don't know, it seems like it's pretty nice to work with. It, to me, the matte paper in doing this, um, it might be more user-friendly because you don't get, a, things aren't changing very fast at all. Now, for me, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm used to doing this type of touch on my pieces, so I might want it to happen faster, but, you know, I I don't know. I, I can put a pretty big glob of it down, and it doesn't seem to be, you know, some obtrusive type of, you know, application, so... I don't know, it seems like it, 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 the only th difference, you know, I was gonna say it might be good for a beginner to do it this way, but they might get really impatient with it and say, oh my God, this is taking forever, which it is taking a lot longer because this, and like I said, this is kind of absorbing into the paper, I think, you know, a lot quicker or more fully maybe. Let's put this, some of these rocks here, a little bit of that fog like that. That looks much better, huh? Right up in here. Um, I said I wasn't going to go like crazy with this one, but I think it looks pretty good with these colored pencils. I don't know if it doesn't even look like colored pencils anymore. Um, I don't know if people can tell um, if those were or not like that. Okay, so just one of the things here this is in mist right here, but I need to anchor that horse down a little bit more. A little bit of shadow underneath them. Like that. And let's knock out some of those super yellowish greens just a little bit. And let's see if I can mute it a little bit. Let's just, here, we'll get a, a darker blue. Maybe. I think that helped it a little bit, but let's texturize it a little bit more now. Again, let's go over that a little bit more. Not not too much, though. Linda's favorite card stop is SU and Nina. Well, Stampin' Up, right? So that's, again, I was wondering. So I've speculated as to what Stampin' Up was using, and I assumed Stampin' Up might have been Chrome Coat, because Stampin' Up's been around for so long. And... Stampin' Up, you know, being in those kind of mid-90s stamping scene already, um, I gotta think it was Chrome Coat. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it changed over the years, you know, which it might have, you know, especially when Chrome Coat, you know, closed. But um, I gotta think it was Chrome Coat back in the day. That's what it, so many people were using and then a few has started using um, this other brand called King James, which is really fantastic. And then they went out of business too. But, um, you know, Chrome Coat was kind of, it's like King of the Hill, you know, for so long. Uh, 
All right, I think that will do it. Let's see. Okay, so looking at this, those, okay, so this is dye based ink, and then these trees right here were um, stays on. So that stays on is darker, I think, just in general. No, that horse was stamped and stays on by totally kind of misted it out like that. Okay. So it looks a little bit different. Okay, I'm thinking of something. I'm trying to think. I need a little bit more definition in here. Oh, okay. So I think one of the things I'm going to do on this one, if I post, I'll, I'll format this card or something like this, but you know what I'm going to do on this? You know how all those, a lot of that uh, white is disappearing into this pulp of this card like this? What you do is you hit this with a, I, I totally forgot about this, but you hit this with a, a workable fixative, right? Which will allow you to go back in there if you want to with more colored pencils or something like that. But it'll seal this scene off and then it'll give me, I, I think, a crisper definition of some of these dots that I want. I want a little bit more shimmer in this area but in using these water-based markers on here, it's just absorbing right into the, uh, the surface. So yeah, workable fixative, I'm guessing should do the trick. And these water-based acrylic markers are not going to put the acrylics, you know, spray back into solution. So I'm not gonna use like a Krylon UV or something. I guess you could, but if you wanna stay with the spirit of this kind of more matte finish, you know, which, I think it's generally a good idea to do. Um, you can have the benefit of the um, yeah, whatever surface oriented retention of media, but you can have the matte look, you know, that you get from, you know, working on matte papers like that. So workable fixatives, if people don't know that, the difference between workable fixatives and uh, just your Krylon, you know, crystal clears, or your, you know, your typical um, spray sealants. Those ones tend to be glossy. You can get them in matte though, but the workable fixatives are specifically designed for, um, you know, sealing, but then retaining a, a good degree of texture on there that will grab things like colored pencils, chalks, you know, charcoals, graphite, all those types of uh, medias like that, mediums like that. Um, you know, to build up additional layers where if you don't seal them off, those additional layers often just remove the layers underneath. So, yeah, but this looks, I really like the look, you know, of these little fresh little, you know, shimmery little dots like this. It kind of makes the, you know, those flowers in the meadow kind of glisten a little bit you know, with that little bit of a contrast, but no sooner do I add that type of thing down there, you know, two minutes later, it's gone. So yeah, workable fixatives. I, I don't, I haven't needed to use that type of thing. So I, you know, I don't thoroughly think about it too much, but I do have some of that uh, just from my days of working with charcoals and things like that back in school. So um, yeah. Uh, hello, Rhonda. I like an element of surprise or interest. Always good to have surprise in there. It's that's what uh, my uh, instructors used to, or one of them used to say. Um, you know, you reward your viewer for um, closer inspection. So um, something like that is always good to surprise someone. You know, or, or we can surprise ourselves too. You know, it's like adding little touches that you know kind of cater to our whatever aesthetic preferences or whatever, you know, those little things that we're, you know, we're into like that. I tend to be into detail. I like detail. So when um, people add like little things in there, I, you know, I don't know. I tend to zero in on those little types of things. I like things overall that don't have that too, you know, but um, like if people put like little, some little thing hidden around, you know, it's like I always kind of zoom in on that. Just, you know, I'm just kind of oriented that way. Um, but yeah, little things like that, but doing little things like for yourself too, you know, is really fun. 
Um, you can add in like your, I don't know, favorite colors of flowers or <laughs> here's what you can do too. You know, if you do something like this, you can put your, you know, adding these little flowers in here, you can kind of dot out your initials. <laughs> Or something of that sort. You know what I mean? It's just kind of fun, you know? It's a, you know, the, what is that? Illustrator. He always hit his initials. Or, not his initials, but he always hit his, uh, his daughter's initials into his drawings, like black and white drawings. I think it was like in the New Yorker or something like that. But, you know, little things like that are fun. And then for the viewers, too, that always get your cards, they might, you know, it might keep them on their toes and they'll... They'll look for those little things like that, you know. Uh, you know what did uh, what did what did Candy add in here? You know. All right, here's a little bit of pink here, a little bit of crisper dot. I don't know. Maybe that one is going to stay crisper. Maybe the uh, maybe the three millimeter is just too wide, you know, of a dot, and you know it's going to have more binder in there. So maybe that, you know. It's, soaking into the page more too so i don't know yeah maybe that's the case i'm getting these little the 0.7 millimeter looks yeah it's a little bit crisper i'm starting to pick up some of this um pigment ink into this pen it's starting to clog it so ideal you kind of do that or i don't know like i said i could spray seal it and go in there with that but anyway yeah i think this will look decent when formatted uh, into a card. I might put a little bit more, I don't know, a little crisper little things here and there. I'll, I don't know, I'll try to figure something out. And also, one of the things I haven't gone into, and I was just talking with someone about um, gel pens. I have a gel pen set, and it has 180 different colors, including um, things like glitter and metallics. So adding like little pink, little glittery touches in here, or the metallics might be kind of interesting too. Just, I don't know, I need, you know, it'll add a little bit of zip to, um, you know, a matte surface that does just, you know, you don't have as much like a, a range of intensity or something like that, but you can keep that. We can use that for its, you know, its own trait, you know, having a more satiny looking finish. But then it'd be cool if there were like little shimmery, little shimmery, little touches in there or if people did embossing or something like that you know where at certain angles we'd get a little bit more of like a you know a little glow or something like that or if you had like tiny little pink crystals in here and you can kind of lay them down there if someone did this with it that would be one of those types of things that um, would be a nice element of surprise huh let's see if anyone gets around the grapevine in the springtime i don't know i think it came later though this year huh it might still be going on but yeah stunning drive from uh la to wherever <laughs> over the grapevine it was uh, really something yeah the super bloom su whisper white matte cardstock glossy is not my fave too many flaws in the cards there's probably a lot of variation in them I, one of the things I noticed with cardstocks too is that um, the differences in glossy cardstocks from brand to brand were vastly different in terms of how they took, you know, the types of inks that we're using, you know, on them. Um, surface quality, there was different surface textures and everything like that. But I found like the semi-gloss and the mattes um, didn't have as much variation as far as the way that I'm using them, okay? Um, I don't know with, with other media, maybe, maybe there's a big difference with like, uh, like I said, with that, like big time, you know, kind of almost, you know, scientific approach to like the Copics and layering and stuff like that. I'm sure there's some differences, but the way that I use it, there wasn't too much of a difference. So that, you know, I don't know. All right. You like that ground cover on this one, Linda? For me, it's, it's still like, I want to use that. I'm going to work that work workable fixative in there and we're, we'll see how that goes. But on this one right here, Linda, just use on your ground covers, do do a lot more of your neutrals on there to build. Well, these ones are the neutrals, but like the neutrals like this, I think, with this type of thing. Um, so if you have, if you're doing it in the dye-based inks, like your, 
this tone, it doesn't have to be this, these colors like this, but like antique linen, walnut stain, have that, use a lot of that first before the greens and the violets or whatever um, colors you're going on. So, so yeah, the one that I have in store that I'm going to do is um, California poppies and these golden poppy um, hillsides. I want to do some of that um, coming up here. So I don't know, violets and uh, uh, greens like this. I really like that kind of bluebellish look, but yeah, we'll go with some uh, different color schemes like that. Yellow would be uh, really fantastic too, I think. Um, I don't know, what other color schemes could there be? White, you know, I, I've done white though before, but um, I don't know, these color ones like this, I think can be really exciting. You know, I, I don't know, I really like that um, color scheme in there, just, you know, for my usual all green, but then if I do put, you know, purple in there, it was always with the pens right over the green, so it wasn't quite as um, floral, carpety looking, you know, but I, I think I want to go with more of these in the future, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I'll probably get on that kick and then I'll probably, you know, go back to all greens or something like that, or, you know, browns, you know, for, you know, California landscapes. All right. Robert Kincaid always hit his N. He did, huh? I didn't hear about that one. Now I want to kind of go back in there and check those out. Huh? I'll, yeah, 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 Nina. Thank you so much. That, that's what's great, great about these um, live streams. There's someone always knows, you know, if we have a question about anything, someone always has the answer I'm finding. Yeah, Nina, that's right. <laughs> I love those. I need to look those up on uh there's probably a video, you know, like a YouTube video or something like that where we can do it. They 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 probably zero in on, you know, that Nina on there or something like that. So, yeah. All right, folks. Thanks so much for checking out my little uh foray into or not foray, but uh <sighs> whatever initial test of a, a mat, an uncoated matte cardstock here. Um, for me, the white pigment ink in here, you know what I mean? That really helped uh, this piece for me. Uh, so if you haven't tried that, you got to try it out. 100% cotton, cotton ball, and just your white pigment ink. Doesn't have to be brilliance. Um, could be any of your white pigment inks. It doesn't dry on, it's not known to dry on certain types of um, like coated card stocks, like glossy, but if you just do a light layer on there, you know, dust in of it like that, it'll dry just fine. I used it on glossy card stocks for years. I'm not talking about the brilliance, I'm talking about like the color box, oil-based ones, okay? When you're just laying like a light layer like that, it'll dry just fine. But then just, you know, give it a light coating, uh, spray sealing, and uh, you know, that's something that I, I find helpful with any scene anyway. So I'm gonna be spraying it whether it has that or not. So um, yeah. So I'll try the workable fixatives in here and uh, I don't know, I'm gonna to try to develop this one a little bit more and get a little bit more, I don't know, whatever kind of little subtle, exciting little, uh, you know, element in there. But I think that uh, the reflective types of things uh, could be pretty good. You know what I mean? Just like in these clusters like this, if you have like, two or three little, you know, if I had to like pink crystals or something like that, you know, like pale pink, that'd be really cool if they were really small in there, you know, and back in the distance or something like that, a couple little areas in here, or I don't know, I'll see if my um, gel pens are still working. As far as I know, they were. I just started to switch to the uh, acrylic pens because they were so much easier to use. All right, folks, have a great rest of evening. And weekend, if I don't see you over the weekend. <laughs>